Today I'm going to show you how to remove the original Russian or Ukrainian ignition um, and install a C5 optical ignition. Um, the ignition that I'm going to be using today is our newest. It's called the CD system. Uh, it does not have a backing plate on it, or it, it, it can, but it does not in this, uh, in this application. Uh, we have a new style mounting system uh, that will fit a wider range of um, models. Um, the older Urals have four um, screws uh, to hold the cam shaft retainer in the back. The newer ones have a lip on them otherwise they're pretty much the same and on the uh, Dnieper's or Nepper's or Nepper's uh, they use three screws and we're working on a three screw um, adapter kit we should have that done uh, here shortly so on our website when you're ordering them we'll have the option to choose between <clears throat> the three and the four screw so what I'm going to show you is how to remove the system, how to install our system, and how to set timing. This is not a complete engine, um, but it's good enough for, uh, for this demonstration. The first thing you'll do is remove your stock ignition. On the newer models, like my 2000 model, uh, it has an electronic ignition, but it's still is held in place by the three screws. Um, on the uh, uh, newer models, they, they may not have that. So the first thing you do is remove this bolt, the center bolt. Which I have loosened already. Save the bolt and washer. You will reuse it uh, when you put our ignition back on. The timing assembly comes off as one piece. Save it for later in case you ever want to put it back to stock to sell it. You'll remove the three screws and for this demonstration I've already got two of the screws out already. So go ahead and take those out. And then you can remove the ignition, the wiring, the stock coil, and um, I'm just going to tuck it right there for now. <clears throat> You're left uh, looking at the camshaft uh, retaining plate, and they'll have screws in them like this, flathead screws, which I've already removed, but there'll be four screws or three screws in here. Um, use an impact screwdriver if you're having a hard time getting them out so you don't uh, end up damaging the heads. Uh, what you're going to do simply is take our adapter and place it over the retaining plate and our ignition adapter is going to screw in <clears throat> in the same location with longer screws where your other ignition was. And once you have this in here and for for permanent installation I would recommend applying a small amount of low strength locking agent onto the threads. For this purpose I'm just going to show you this. So our adapter plate is screwed in place. We're ready to go. The ignition module again on this particular kit is held in place by uh, some small pan head screws. Be very careful when you're installing this ignition with these screws to not over tighten the screws. If you do, you'll crack the ignition, and that will not be covered under warranty, and uh, it will cause delays in getting you a different module. Um, a small amount of locking agent will give you four screws. This will bolt down or screw down with uh, four fasteners. <clears throat> At this point in time, you're going to install the magic of this system, the optical disc. A stainless steel, be very careful not to bend these fingers when you're installing it. There is an adapter piece which simply slides over your camshaft. This carefully goes in place and then we provide you with a small aluminum spacer. You'll simply put that over the top and put your stock bolt and washer back in place. Now, if I was installing this on a bike, I would remove the coil uh, and the ignition. Um, you can, when you're done, you can silicone up the holes. Uh, I would recommend running these wires through one of the original spark plug holes and sealing it up. I'll show you the colors of the wiring. It has red. That's going to go to a switched ignition source to turn the ignition on and off. 
black should go back to the battery ground so there's no grounding issues uh, white will be connected to the coil trigger the coil has three wires our newest coil um, no one's really probably familiar with this yet red one goes directly to the battery positive black goes directly to the battery negative and the yellow which will have a, a little piece a connector crimped on here this do not let this wire touch anything except for the white wire on the ignition if you accidentally touch this yellow wire to frame you will turn the coil on and in about two seconds uh, the coil will start to smoke and um, you get to buy a new coil so just be careful the uh, yellow one should be um, actually the coil should be left disconnected until you're ready to uh, uh, fire up the bike but I'll go through that in a minute okay so back to the wiring we've got red is power black is ground white turns the coil on and off green is for a digital tack if you have an electronic tachometer this provides a tack output if you don't use an electronic tack fold it over tape it up put some heat shrink on it um, and and uh, don't let it touch anything on the blue and brown leads this is different than any other power arc or raceway or c5 ignition for russian bikes this new ignition has four timing maps instead of two and so by grounding or ungrounding these two leads this will provide you with the four different maps so if you ground them both to the frame you're in map number one that will be the most aggressive timing it works well say on my solo or um, an empty sidecar <clears throat> the next one is if you only connected the blue that's map number two that would be an empty sidecar uh, a little bit more load if you only grounded the brown one that would be map number three that would be a loaded sidecar and if you didn't uh, if you didn't ground either one of these wires you'd be in map number four and number four would be in um, low octane poor fuel quality uh, mountainous terrain um, maybe you have an issue with the motorcycle and you're just trying to limp back home this will be a very retarded timing at high rpm so you'll be down more like um, you know 30 degrees of timing and if you ground both of these you're going to be um, in the high 30s uh, so anyway that's all you have for wiring it's that simple these wires one to power one to ground one to the coil and uh, and these two to your frame and that's it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect power temporarily to um, this ignition and I'm gonna show you how to set timing and when you're setting timing you're going to put the engine on exactly top dead center um, get it as close as you possibly can do not set it for the timing the firing marks for advance you want to set it exactly at TDC and that's so that our computer knows where the, when the piston is at the top and all of the timing is all done via the computer and the timing maps so right now I just connected the ignition <clears throat> temporarily and I'm gonna zoom in just a minute and show you something okay this is the timing slot and the timing slot is very very thin so it's extremely accurate the timing light is located right there what you're going to do is you're going to connect the ignition to your motorcycle get everything ready to go but do not connect the coil yet put your engine at TDC and you're going to rotate this disc until this slot is underneath this reader and watch for the red light to come on and the light will come on and at that point you'll hold it in place very carefully while you tighten the screw okay you've seen the light is on right there so it's on TDC and now you'll tighten the screw when you're done tightening the screw you want to make sure that the light is still on at this point your ignition is set now what you can do is go ahead and run your wires uh, connect the coil um, the last thing you should do is uh, connect the power uh, to the coil so that uh, again you don't accidentally short out anything 
<clears throat> and then you're ready to go. <clears throat> uh, if any of you are into programming the ignitions, the programmer port on the new ignition is right here. So you can take our programmer cable, plug it into the top, turn the key on, and you can go ahead and download new maps. Again, there are four maps on here instead of two. So we're giving you the newest coil, which is capable of well over 100,000 volts, right around 140. Uh, we run this down um, around 40,000 volts. So this is a wasted spark coil. There's two, two towers here and here. Um, this is very, very thin compared to our old coils. As you can see, it's extremely thin. Uh, it's very light. Uh, there are two mounting holes and you only need to use one if you want to or you can zip tie it in place or you can fasten it however you want to. Um, but extremely powerful, extremely light and extremely thin coil compared to the old ones. <clears throat> and I recommend mounting it somewhere under the seat or possibly under the gas tank um, so that it can't be damaged by flying debris if you're the kind of person that likes to go off-road, which I do. So at this point, again just to review, you remove all of your stock parts, you screw on our adapter using the screws we provide, you'll screw on the ignition using the screws we provide, you'll reuse your bolt and use our spacers and then you'll set timing. At that point, connect the coil, go out and ride. If you have any questions, we will have um, a revised online installation guide at uh, www.c5ignitions.com uh, if you have questions you can email us from our website there's a link to our C5 performance um, Facebook page uh, you can contact me on Facebook if you want to we have a company uh, Facebook page C5 performance and um, me personally Paul Crow as C-R-O-W-E and um, you can contact us on Facebook but again very very easy to install if you have questions let us know uh, this video will be posted um, underneath the online wiring diagrams and the installation guide so hopefully this this helped you guys out a little bit so and we'll talk to you soon thank you